Hi, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us for today's Meet the Analyst webinar, U.S. Digital Ad Spend Outlook. I'm your host, Paul Verna, Principal Analyst at Insider Intelligence, based in New York, and I'm joined by my colleague, Senior Forecasting Writer, Ethan Kramer Flood, who's also in New York. Hi, Ethan, great to have you here. Hi, Paul, great to be here. So before we get into the main presentation, I'd like to thank T-Mobile Advertising Solutions for making today's webinar possible. And I'd like to welcome Chirian Thomas, Head of Marketing and Go-To-Market at T-Mobile Advertising Solutions. Chirian is joining us from Bethesda, Maryland. Hi, Chirian. Stephen, Paul, hey, Ethan, thanks for having me. Great to have you. So a few things before we dive in. We have a ton of information to share, but there's no need to take notes if you'd rather not. We'll email you a link to view the slides and the full recording of today's presentation, but we do want you to participate. Just use the chat window on the right of the video feed to submit questions at any time during the presentation. We'll get to as many as we can during the Q&A at the end of the session. So with that, Ethan, let's get started. What's on the agenda? <laughs> Great, thanks, Paul. Uh, thanks for that great introduction and hello everyone. So yes, I am Ethan Kramer Flood. I'm the senior forecasting writer here at Insider Intelligence and eMarketer. And I'm here today to present for all of you uh, the results of our new report uh, outlining our, the totality of our US ad spending forecast for 2023. Uh, the purpose of that report and therefore the purpose of this presentation is to, to the extent possible, provide a one-stop shop for all the biggest storylines, the biggest metrics, the biggest projections uh, that we now have available for all of you for the whole world of ad spending and particularly digital ad spending uh, for the US for this year and beyond. Now I say to the extent possible because the forecast package that we come out with is really monumental. It's thousands of metrics comprising tens of thousands of data points. Uh, it's really far, it would, we would be here for hours if I told you everything that we had across all the various uh, channels and platforms and metrics and ways in which uh, ad spending is distributed in this country uh, and the way in which ad revenues are distributed in this country. So what I'm gonna try to do is just touch on a little bit the biggest stories, give you a sense of the overall trends, how they all compare against one another, what the biggest storylines are for the hottest topics in digital advertising, uh, as well as just the biggest chunks, the biggest pools of where a lot of the money is going. So you see in front of you here the agenda that we're gonna walk through, and I've sort of set it up to be in four buckets. We're gonna, first, of course, we're gonna start at the very top, the full 35,000 foot view of uh, the outlook for overall total media ad spending, and then we'll dig down one layer for digital ad spending. And then you'll get a sense of some of the big trends that are sort of influencing everything that we're gonna talk about after that. Once I've gotten through those big umbrella topics, we'll go down one layer further into the formats. So I'll spend a little time on search ad spending, display ad spending, and then digital video ad spending, which for us is a subcategory of display ad spending. But of course, digital video ad spending is enormous in its own right. So these are the, the three uh, formats that I'm going to call out. You'll get a little bit even more sense of the trends that are then going to impact the individual channels. So the next part, section uh, three, four, five, six, and seven is when I'll, we'll do a little dig down on the individual storylines and some of the, the major channels. And I have um, coordinated it so that we'll do the good news first uh, some of these channel, these, some of these categories and metrics have really positive outlooks and there's some real bright spots and then some less so. So we will start out with the good news. We'll start out with the bright spots, which uh, probably if you're watching this, you won't be surprised that that will entail uh, retail media and CTV. Those are the real bangers this year. Those are the real winners. And then maybe the story gets a little bit more complicated or not always so positive and some of the other elements that we'll get to later. And then towards the end, uh, I will finish up with it. We'll take a look at the big companies that are involved, that's Section 8 there, the Triopoly and the rest. We'll take a look at uh, the major ad publishing platforms that are soaking up all the spending that I will have been talking about up to that point. And then I got a couple of takeaways at the end and, I'll, and then I'll pass it back to 
Paul and Shirian uh, to talk about everything that I just talked about. And then I think we'll have a, a, an open Q&A after that as well. So let me get started here uh, at the, you know, at the very, very top most top, top, top line figure, you know, row one on our forecasting spreadsheet is total media ad spending. This is everything, right? This is the biggest number that you're going to find. And you'll see that $350 billion figure there for 2023. Uh, obviously, that's a, that's a very large number, but your eyes will probably be going to that red line that we see on this table here, right? And this red line, I do want to call attention to it. That is the growth figure estimates. And unavoidably, one notices that 2023, that's a very low number, right? You're not wrong if that's what you're thinking. It is 3.8%. That is not great uh, compared to almost anything in, you know, in recent memory. Um, however, it is, it, there is a U shape to this line. Now, 2021 shows a gigantic growth figure. You will see this as I go forward on all of my slides. You're going to see this uh, if we go back just a couple of years, you're, you're going to see really, really, really huge growth numbers uh, across basically everything that we're going to be talking about. That's that's what it was. Uh, things have come down considerably since then. 2023, we're we're looking at uh, you know nearly record low or record low growth figures across a lot of the topics, a lot of the categories I'm going to be talking about. However, it is a, a the story is is complex. Um, even though you will see this U-shaped red line growth data point uh, trend across most of the things that I'll be talking about, they are different. They're playing out a little bit differently. We do see a rebound in 2024, both overall at this level and for a lot of the other categories I'll be talking about. That generally has to do with just the overall macroeconomic situation in the US. We think that levels of uncertainty and, and troubles with uh, inflation and interest rates and, and caution um, will max out this year. And for the most part, next year will be better across most of the things that we're going to be talking about. So you'll see this pop up, but it's not going to go back to the, the glory days of two years ago or even really over the past 10 years where we, we would expect higher growth figures than this. And uh, lastly, I do want to point out, because I'm not going to talk about traditional ad spending very much throughout the course of this presentation it will mostly be digital, but traditional is going to outright contract this year. So that 3.8% growth figure you see uh, is being dragged down by a 6.3% decline between TV, radio, traditional out of home and print. And that's that the 3.8 positive is basically because of digital, right? Digital, which is what we're mainly here to talk about is doing better than that. It's not doing great by the standards of the past 10 years. You do see a smaller version of that U formation on the red line here. You do see a bit of a rebound next year, getting back up into double digit growth rates for the next few years beyond. That counts as good news. The total figures here are quite enormous. Even at 7.8% growth, we're looking at 20 billion almost in new spending this year, uh, but let's let's not you know beat around the bush. We are talking about the lowest growth rate since there was a massive financial crisis 15 years ago, right? So we are there. It's the, the there is good news and bad news. I'll, I'll get to the good news when when we, when we get down to the individual channels. But 2023 is not looking great. Um, it is looking better going forward, though, and so that is good news to hold on to. Um, so now that I've uh, given you the overall picture, the scale of what we're talking about, the general patterns that we're gonna be seeing. Let's break it down a little bit into the individual formats. And that's where some of the storylines really do start to diverge. So I apologize for the, the squinty busyness of this table here, um, but I thought this was the best way to demonstrate both the top line results of our projections for display ad spending and search ad spending which is what this slide is really about and we're talking about. But it also gives you a little sneak preview of some of the, the more interesting storylines among the subcategories of search and display. So I'll draw your attention to those growth rates, right? We're, we're showing overall all search ad spending across all formats uh, and channels at an 8.3% 
increase this year and display ad spending at 7.9. Although search is uh, showing a higher figure here, they're actually heading in reverse directions for search. This will represent a fairly significant deceleration in growth. Last year was better for search than expected. This year it's coming back down. That's the opposite pattern to what happened with display. But on search, really what we're seeing is a fairly gloomy outlook for Google. Right? Google search is the overwhelmingly dominant element in overall ad spending. Now there's a hot new story that we're gonna be talking about and that of course is retail media ad spending. And the retail media story is heavily dominated by search, right? The e-commerce channel search ad spending. And so I have put a little subcategory of search here for retail media search. That's not all retail media ad spending, but it's the, the search element. And that's, growing, that's gonna grow at 18.7%, right? There's a reason that's a big deal. That will pull up overall search ads, the outlook for overall search ad spending in the US this year. Uh, but Google's more mediocre outlook is gonna keep that at 8.3 which is one of the, you know, one of the lowest figures um, that we've seen. On the display side, it's the 7.9 figure actually represents a rebound from last year. Last year was uh, display's worst year, I think, ever since we've been tracking. And that was driven mainly by Meta, right? If you're watching this, you probably know that Meta had some all time bad results uh, last year. This year, it's slightly looking a little bit better, not great, uh, but social media advertising remains the biggest part of the overall display advertising bucket, and that is largely a meta story. Meta won't be dra dragging down growth as much this year as before, so that does leave some space for an improvement, but it doesn't take, it's not real hard to figure out where that improvement is coming from. If you look again at this table under display, I have listed out CTV display advertising, right? Which is obviously video advertising. And as I mentioned before, digital video advertising is under display for us. So CTV here at 21.2% growth, that's great. That's one of the real bright spots and that's going to help drive display up. And speaking of digital video, uh, in all of its various iterations, uh, helping the display category here, we break it out for you. So this is obviously uh, a, a, a better story when you think about the digital advertising world in general and what's doing well, you think about CTV and you also think about short form social video, right? TikTok and all of TikTok's various uh, competitors and knockoffs on all the other platforms. So just if we break out display just into the digital video element, look at that red line again. I know there's a gigantic drop from 2021 um, but it's still, you still see a U to some extent. And really what you see here is that growth is gonna be, remain in the double digits, low double digits, but growth is still strong. That blue line is going up. Digital video is not gonna stop its trend of becoming more and more important. That blue line is showing you digital videos share of overall digital ad spending. But if, you, if we uh, took it as a share of display ad spending, it's way over 50%. Right, the majority of display ad spending has become video ad spending. So this is going to continue on in a relatively positive track, even though, yeah, I mean it's not it's not growing like it once was. Nothing is, but you're still looking at you know 15, 14 percent this year, 15.4 next year. That's pretty good. Rapidly heading for 100 billion. Okay, so there's the general context of uh, what's going on at the highest levels and the second highest levels and all the various formats. Uh, now let's dig into some of the storylines, some of the channels. And as I promised, we're going to start out on a high note. We're going to start out on two high notes, but we're going to start on maybe the highest one, which is retail media. Uh, so right off the bat, uh, look at look at our look at our growth figures here. Um, they are much higher. That U-shaped red line is doing something in retail media that it, it's not doing for any other metric or any other category that we track. Retail media digital ad spending will actually accelerate out into the future. Year after year, we're showing faster and faster growth. There's nothing else that we track that is in line to do this. We think this is 
possible because uh, it is still to some degree coming from a small base. The base isn't very small anymore, actually. We have 45 billion, right? This is a pretty big base, but it is still small in the grand scheme of things, considering both how effective and popular it is and how much many of the potential players in this space have not fully ramped up yet. So this, this chart here that you're seeing in front of you is still largely an Amazon story, right? Not surprising. So if you look at those big numbers there, you can just imagine your head 75% of all of this right now is going to Amazon. So Amazon is, is the story, they're driving the story. But we think that over time, Amazon's share of this explosive market will decline a little bit as more players come in and more options and opportunities present themselves. And that itself is going to help that, that accelerating growth uh, endure for, for the next several years. Also, unlike many of the other elements in the advertising world, we don't think retail media's opportunity will be hindered by a weak economy um, in recessionary conditions or periods of uncertainty. Uh, this is exactly the type of advertising that people want, right? This gets you close to as close as possible to the bottom of the sales funnel. And as the US economy remains shaky, uh, even more money could, could flow in this direction. Uh, the other very positive story for this year and going forward is CTV, right? If you're here listening to me now, you probably know that this is the, the other category that has been getting a lot of attention in recent months uh, and for good reason. So right off the bat, 2023 red line, 21.2%. I will highlight that because that is the fastest for this year. Uh, of all the various categories that we track, nothing will grow faster than CTV this year. Uh, next year, it, it will drop a little under retail. We saw you know, that the retail media is actually going to accelerate going forward, the, the true U-shaped uh, pattern. Uh, CTV won't accelerate anymore, but it's still looking pretty good, right? We've got some pretty good growth numbers going forward. 2023 is really going to pop because this year we've got a couple of major players drawing in ad revenue uh, that didn't really exist before, right? Netflix and Disney Plus, as I mentioned over here on the left, like they contributed uh, minimally to this category last year. And this year, they're fully open for business. And our by our projections, there's about, about looks like about four billion, four and a half billion in new spending going to connected TV this year. Uh, Netflix and Disney are going to account for about 40% of that, right? That's just a bunch of money that wasn't there before, and now it is. So they're a big part of the growth story, and that's going to continue because we see more and more ad-supported subscription options out there. Overall, uh, the legacy players are still out in front. Uh, I don't have time today in this presentation to break down all of these players for you. We do have all of that available on our website, but Hulu remains in first place. YouTube in second place, Roku, uh, those, they're, they're well ahead of the new players and they do account for the largest chunk of what's happening. But there are a whole heck of a lot uh, of platforms in this space now. And the, the outlook for almost all of them is very positive, right? There's a, the, there will be many winners. Uh, that is the outlook for 2023, 2024. Uh, there's just a lot of new money flowing into this space and it's being divided up a lot of different ways and everybody has some pretty good growth projections if I um, can just... Paul, yeah i was just i was gonna throw it over to paul here uh thanks thanks for reminding me i did have that in my head uh this the, you know this presentation is uh, uh has set up to be in the during the new fronts and upfront season and my colleague paul is more of an expert on that than i am so why don't, can you walk us through a little bit about uh your impressions of that and and how that some of those storylines interact with some of these data points. Yeah, and, and sorry to jump ahead of you, Ethan, but uh, I, I guess I just got so eager. I'm just so um, <laughs> um, eager to share this um, knowledge. But um, well, with the upfronts, we're seeing a story play out that's really the continuation of what we've been seeing. But every year it gets a little bit more closer, I guess, to, to what we expect to be a tipping point. And that is simply... A lot more dollars going to digital video and specifically CTV than to traditional TV, which I know you're going to get into later. 
I also want to just call out, you talked about YouTube and more and more viewing time on YouTube is now spent on connected TV. Uh, up until now, they've been primarily a mobile oriented format. I mean, they started on desktop and then became uh, predominantly mobile, but now we're really seeing them double down on CTV. So they're drawing more of those ad dollars and just kind of like raising the bar right across CTV. And I guess the last thing I'll say is that I totally agree with Ethan. This is the dynamic duo, you know, retail media and CTV. We've been saying that CTV is the fastest growing, but then starting next year, we'll be able to say retail media is the fastest growing, but they're really kind of neck and neck and they're both the center of attention when it comes to digital advertising. Great, thanks for that. And, uh, and unfortunately, that's the end of our good news portion. And I'm going to get into the more, well, I wouldn't say bad news, but some of the areas that are struggling, especially in comparison uh, to what we had seen in the past when arguably social media ad spending was the driver of a lot of what was happening in digital. Um, this, you, you'll see that you see that big collapse on the growth line. Uh, this, this, t this chart is, is slightly shifted uh, backwards in time because we only go to 2025 on social, but you do see a drop to 5% growth last year and another decline this year to 3.4%. Uh, as I mentioned at the top, this category, you can look at this chart and think, think about these, these uh, vertical bars the same way as uh, you thought about Amazon on the retail media chart. This is the meta chart, right? So howsoever goes meta is generally how this is going to turn out. That is despite the fact that TikTok is of course doing great. Uh, there's nothing wrong with TikTok. We haven't changed our projections on TikTok. We still expect them to uh, grow their uh, ad revenue by more than 20% this year. That's, I mean, that's a drop from the 100 plus percent they had been growing at. But TikTok is still doing extremely well. Uh, they're still taking share. Uh, there, nothing has changed in that storyline. It's just that TikTok, despite all of the multi-year hype, is still a very small part of the story. Only 9% of all social media ad spending goes to TikTok, 75% goes to Facebook and Instagram. So whatever Meta's outlook is, kind of drives this outcome. And it doesn't help now, looking at that 3.4% for this year, it doesn't help what's going on with Twitter. Uh, obviously, there's a big collapse there. Twitter, not a big player, but you know, a huge negative outcome is not going to help. Snapchat, also, the outlook is not good. We really only have, besides TikTok, we've got sort of LinkedIn and Reddit, are projected to do okay, but again, they are small players in a comparative sense. So this remains a meta story for now. But look, in 2024, 2025, again, based largely on our economic outlook for the whole country, we do see a bit of a rebound. Uh, I'm gonna pick up the pace a little bit here so I can get through uh, these final sections. So I'm not gonna talk too much about traditional TV, because I know that's probably not what everyone is here to, to check out, but look at that red line, right? TV is way in the negative this year. Uh, you know, it's it's no surprise to anyone. This is this story has been out there for 10 years, the decline of TV. It was slightly reversed over the past couple of years. You do see positive ad spending growth rates for traditional TV in 2021 and 2022. That's a bit of an illusion. Those, those positive numbers were possible because of the huge collapse in 2020 during the pandemic. So post-pandemic return of sports, the Olympics, uh, the World Cup, it allowed for some positive momentum. That's petered out. We're sort of back to normal, back on trend. We're looking at a $5 billion loss uh, year over year in 2023. You do see that typical TV pattern of up, down, up, down that comes from political ad spending uh, and the Olympics. So that does enable TV every other year to sort of reverse its pattern. Uh, but the outlook is not good. Right? This is about this is about as bad as it has ever been. I think the total figure here uh, at 61 billion is as low as it's been in in more than 10 years. Uh, so we're talking about a 10 year reversal. That said, 61 billion, right? That's why I continue to include this slide in my reports. That is a lot of money. TV is still really, really, really big. Um, it is just interminably heading in the, the wrong direction. And then the last channel I'll check out. Look. I'll, I'll uh, talk about is uh, relatively smaller digital audio. Um, you know, this this is a, a category that is just big enough, just significant enough to be included. The outlook is okay. 
uh, it's somewhere in the middle. This is not bad news, good news or bad news. Uh, you know, po podcasting makes up about two billion of this figure. You see the six point eight figure for twenty twenty three. You see that that muted U shape. So spending is a little more stable in digital audio at a lower level. It continues to grow. Engagement with digital audio, listenership for digital audio and podcasts. These all continue to grow. The outlook remains positive. It's just not as explosive as maybe some had once expected it to be. And so there's a little bit of a negative sentiment. We thought that some folks thought that podcasting and digital audio overall would be the next really big thing. Uh, it might be a little bit more of a slow process than that, but nonetheless, still pretty good, right? Over 10% growth next year. So let me, uh, let me come down to the, the landing strip here by uh, showing you what all this means for the biggest players, right? These, these digital uh, uh, advertising publisher platforms that are soaking up all the spending that I've been talking about. This is always fun to compare and contrast against. So what you'll see here, these are share figures, share of the overall market. On the next slide, I'll give you some absolute numbers so you can see how a lot of the biggest players compare against one another. But right off the top, if you're looking at this, you see this red line on top going down and a gray line going down. That's Google and Meta, right? They, the, the former duopoly, I guess they're still duopoly, but now we mostly say triopoly. But we see the duopoly uh, now accounts for less than 50% of the digital advertising market uh, as of last year, and that share will decline. Then your eyes will notice the rising gray line under them. That is obviously Amazon, right? They are. There's a reason that retail media is stealing all the headlines. Uh, we could very soon project that Amazon is in line to catch Meta. Uh, that that's not the case yet as of 2025. But you can see it's right on Meta's heels. It's getting there. And unless something changes at Meta with their model, um, it's entirely likely that Amazon will eventually catch it catch them and we'll have a two triopoly. And then I show you Microsoft and TikTok down there in the bottom, just for comparison sake, again, TikTok is doing great, but look at how small they, they are despite all of these years of growth. Microsoft also uh, is growing faster than the duopoly and, but it's just, you know, they're, they're, they're way, way back behind. And then here you can sort of see it in comparison with the actual figures for our projections for 2023, you can also see the mega conglomerates divided up into their component parts. You see Facebook and Instagram. Instagram has been, has been and will continue to grow much faster than Facebook, uh, and it is approaching parity there. Uh, in Meta's empire, you see YouTube. Uh, YouTube very small compared to Google search, but YouTube is actually gigantic, right? YouTube is a huge, huge player. They'd be fifth or sixth uh, if they were broken out here, but we put them up there with Alphabet so that y'all can see how it all looks all next to each other. And there's TikTok and Microsoft, right? Bringing, bringing up the, the bottom of the top five and then on down the list, Apple, you know, some folks don't, would be surprised, right? You don't think of them as an advertising company, but there they are. And there's Hulu. Hulu, as I mentioned, still the number one CTV player. YouTube up there obviously has a much bigger figure next to it, but that's because we do break out YouTube's advertising revenue based on the device and the way that the consumer is viewing it. So YouTube still does, despite, as Paul mentioned, uh, increasingly all of us are watching YouTube on the television screen, but its advertising business still gets more from all of us watching YouTube on our mobile devices, on our, lap on our desktops and laptops. So that's how they compare. And then if you go into our website, which I encourage anyone to do, if you can, uh, we have about this, this list goes down to about the top 20 or 25. We get all the way down to companies that are in the 500 million or so mark. So you can see how they all compare against each other and growth projections out for the next several years. Uh, so let me wrap it up here. I think I'm coming down to the end of my time slot. Uh, so just some, some general final thoughts and takeaways. And then this, this flash chart on the left here is a handy comparison of the five things that I just talked about. So this is this is not everything over here on the left, like the search ad spending and Google's not on here, but the five channels that I just talked about, here they are next to each other, because I know I've been throwing a lot of numbers out at you, but if you wanna compare them next to each other, you see the social, social media, the, the meta story is still out in front. That is the biggest one of these channels, but its outlook is, is um, a little bit shakier. There is TV, as I mentioned, TV is gigantic, right? It's going down, but it is, it's still far bigger 
uh, than retail media or CTV, which you see coming in third and fourth year, although they are growing like gangbusters. And then there's digital audio. Um, so, uh, you know, here, I'll, I'll let these final thoughts and, and takeaways wash over you because I am at time and I want to uh, hand it back to Paul and Chirian, uh, but I will hold tight here and come back for the Q&A. In the meantime, uh, Paul, take it away. That was great. Thank you, Ethan. And um, before we get to your questions live, and we've had some good ones so far, so please keep them coming. Um, I would like to bring back our special guest from T-Mobile Advertising Solutions, Cherian Thomas, Head of Marketing and Go-To-Market. Welcome again, Cherian. Hey, Paul. Good to be back. So let me ask you, in your view, I mean, looking at this whole package of, of forecasts across a wide field, uh, what what does this all mean for marketers in the U.S.? Yeah, I mean, look, this is fantastic, Ethan. I think my my only feedback would be next time you can start with the bad and with the good. So my transition will be, uh, you know, from a good note to a good note. But look, the 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 data doesn't lie. The numbers don't lie. I think this is an, an interesting moment in time that that we're in right now. Um, there's, you know, the, the the from a macro perspective, right? You've got you know big tech companies having all of these rifts. You've got inflation, as as Ethan had alluded to. You've got rising interest rates, but if you just look at the ad in, in, ecosystem, there's some changes happening there, right? And you've got you know all these changes with IDFA, third-party cookies going away, GDPR from Europe inching closer into the into the United States, and that's really impacting brands. Um, and it's impacting brands by you know creating you know higher CAC costs, um, and quite frankly, a little less R in the ROI. And so what this means for marketers is, you know, you, you need to be make every dollar count and you need to make sure that you're buying smart um, and you need to make sure that you're maybe thinking a little bit outside of the box, um, because if you did the exact same thing you did last year, this year, um, just given the changes in the ecosystem, you know, you're, you're not going to get those incremental boosted results. Um, and so that's where we recommend, you know, folks need to be smart and sophisticated um, in our world that's layering first party data. Um, you know, as T-Mobile, we have an amazing relationship with our customers, and we have the privilege of of having this T-Mobile first party data uh, to make the buys smarter, right, and identifying the who. Um, but on top of that, you know, the customer journey has changed, and so we talked about this rise of retail media. But at the same time, you know, you think about just the customer journey alone um, is different, and so you know, we we always recommend and talk to our our, our partners about. You know, other moments that you could reach consumers. Um, our rideshare advertising offering is a perfect example of that. Um, you know, you got rideshare at an all-time high, and you have an opportunity to reach you know uh, this this captive audience with sight, sound, and motion. Um, and again, it's a little bit outside of that box, but it drives those incremental results. And so, you know, I think to summarize what it means for marketers is you, you need to make every dollar count because every dollar is going a little bit less than it was previously with the with the uh, you know the the disruptions in the ecosystem now. And in what other areas do you expect to see growth in terms of digital ad spend? Yeah, and you know, I, I know that Ethan had mentioned kind of this decline in out of home, and I totally agree with that. But you know, the key word is D in the digital out of home, and we see a tremendous growth vertical there. Um, and we actually think like, as you look at retail media growing, right, if you look at the e-marketer uh, kind of charts and stats, right, if you look at Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, CVS, Kroger, um, you know, Costco, uh, foot traffic actually far exceeds app and web traffic. And therein lies an opportunity we feel for, for digital out of home uh, to create more screens and more times and moments in the day to reach a consumer. Um, and we're very bullish on that, primarily because it allows us to leverage, as I mentioned, our first party data, but also connectivity, right? And screen costs are going down. We, we all know what it was like to buy a 75-inch TV 10 years ago uh, compared to what it is now. And uh, all of those screens need um, you know, connectivity and they need connections to the internet. And that's where we come in. So we see that as a major, major growth vertical. Um, but we also see it as an opportunity to solve customer pain points, right? So why can't you go to Home Depot and, you know, um, go to a kiosk and type in, I'm looking for a hammer. And then the kiosk tell you it's in row seven, aisle three, right? 
Um, there, therein lies an opportunity for for you to have for a brand to connect with a consumer. Maybe Black and Decker wants to connect with the consumer right there, right? Or um, you know, or Ryobi and so forth. So that's where we see some potential. Um, and then we also see the potential in just one PD, right? Um, it's it's a different environment, and those with scale um, and those with first party data, um, I think, are going to be be the winners in this. So based on Ethan's report, CTV is clearly a shining star in terms of growth. I'm wondering mm -hmm. why you think that's happening right now. Well, you know, it's a great question, Paul. I mean, I think, you know, consumers have changed. Consumer behavior has trained, changed drastically. Um, if you look at today's consumer, right, like they want instant gratification. Um, you're on their terms, not the, the you know, the uh, the publisher's terms. Um, and I think it's growing now because the publishers have realized like, hey, let me meet my customer in their viewing lane, right? Let me deliver on demand when you want, where you want, and, and, and let those consumers have it their way. And quite frankly, um, you know, that most sought after audience that, that brands are trying to reach that 18 to 35 or even 18 to 49 year old um, is going over the top. They're tech savvy, right? Um, and you know, maybe if you're trying to reach 55 plus, you know, linear can be ad advantageous. But for the most part, today's consumer is tech savvy. They're on the go, right? Which is why we have this rideshare advertising offering. Um, and 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 they want it. You know, you need to you need to work to their convenience, not the other way around. They're not they're not part of your linear programming. Um, and then just to kind of build upon that, I think you know, if you look over the past 10 years, there were a lot of different players. Everybody's got their own data. Everybody's got their own analytics. Everybody's got their own post campaign reporting. And I think, you know, those publishers have come together and and basically uh, create a more streamlined approach. So a brand and agency can look at two reports from two pubs and it kind of looks the same. Um, and it's getting better, right? By, you know, adding ACR data, what content was on, what was what was the actual, uh, you know, um, household viewing at this time. Um, but just to reiterate, while CTV has been growing and CTV solves for the where, um, you still have to solve for the who. So then just going back to that one PD, um, that's where we're able to layer kind of T-Mobile audience data um, across premium inventory around CTV. And then you get the who with the where, which is kind of the, the best of both worlds there. So uh, as an ad tech provider, what kinds of questions are marketers asking you and how are you advising that? Yeah, it's funny because, um, you know, we, at the end of the day, right, there's two main questions that advertisers and brands want to know. And we can talk about KPI this, KPI that, but at the end of the day, it's return on ad spend, so ROAS, and it's did the cash register ring, right? When I put a dollar in, did I get a dollar 13 out, right? Or I get a dollar 20 out. And so I think that's really important. But then, you know, I think not all first party data is created equal. Um, and so I think, you know, these brands want to know, you know, is this the right audience that you have? Um, is there scale, right? Like, do you have a large enough statistically significant sample size, right? And, um, and then lastly, like, is it relevant? Is it today, right? Is it relevant or is it mobile ad IDs from 2012, right? So from some third party SDK that's been hovering on the back of an app, right? And, you know, I think that's where we come in and and we are able to layer in our first party data. Um, it clearly has scale. We have over 113 million customers that love us, right? And we think that there are problems in advertising and we think we can make that advertising experience better for them. Um, and then lastly, you know, I think it's, it's how do you create kind of this one-stop shop? And so um, in, in short, it's return on ad spend, did the cash register ring? And how do I not have to deal with 20 different insertion orders to execute this buy? And that's where, you know, uh, T-Mobile as a telco, quite frankly, the the only telco in this space now after the divestments from AT&T and Verizon, right, uh, is able to come in and say, hey, we can solve those those brand and agency pain points just as we, we've say, solved those customer pain points for, um, for our cellular carriers. Well, thank you for those great insights, Sharian. Um, so now it's time to get into our audience Q&A. We've received a lot of great, great questions, starting with this one. Uh, and this one, I think, is for you, Ethan. Do these projections include the impact of generative AI and chat GPT, particularly on search? 
Yeah, yeah, I'll take that one. Although uh, both of you feel free to um, comment on your thoughts on the, the wider sort of AI digital advertising um, scene, because I think I think there's multiple layers to this question on the technical side or on the forecasting methodology side, I'll address that. And the answer is yes, for sure, absolutely. This has been something that was deeply discussed during the construction of this forecast, particularly you know, on, on the search side uh, mainly. Um, so the answer is yes, that the assumptions around that were incorporated into it. Um, specifically, not too much of an impact in 2023. So the, the search forecast, the total search ad spending forecast as it relates to say Google, um, that was not impacted this year. We think Google, the Google, the, the, the sort of relatively mediocre outlook for Google search was on its own merits or on, on a, a range of different um, uh, drivers. Um, but we did incorporate some assumptions related to how AI is going to impact the overall search field going forward. And for us, it actually resulted in a, a, a bit of a, a decline overall. So the story maybe in the media is about whether or not Bing, but because Microsoft's, you know, is perceived to have a leg up um, and Bing will has an opportunity to steal some share. Uh, that's probably true, but we're not um, looking at it from a perspective of users or total search. We're looking at it in terms of ad spending. And the assumption right now is that the continuing development and perfection of chat GPT style enhancements to the search experience could result in actually lower growth rates for the totality of search ad spending going forward, because as they get increasingly accurate and increasingly effective, you're gonna actually have fewer searches. So the average person going to look for something will, will click less you'll get the right answer right away, or you will find what you need right away. You won't have to go back and forth. You won't have to scroll. There just won't be as much engagement or interaction. And Microsoft has, has said as much so that it might be a possibility. So the overall pie for search ad spending might decline because there's just less opportunity to serve ads possibly. Now, to the extent that Google catches up and gets some of that share back, that might happen. But really what we were looking at is is the sort of along the 2024, 2025 forecast, uh, we brought it down a little bit because of this. Yeah, and Paul, just, just to chime in on that, because uh, as T-Mobile, everything we do today and are doing tomorrow is data-driven and, and, and AI-driven, right? And so um, as we talk about kind of these impacts on search, I think, you know, it's, 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 it's probably important to talk about the opportunities that it's yielding for other players to come in and capture market share. Um, and we look at that, you know, every day, right? I kind of just want to reiterate this, you know, you have 113 million people using our devices. How do we solve problems for them? And uh, to the extent that we can leverage AI and solve those problems, we do it, right? And and we do that in our customer care and we're doing that in the future where um, we can be an assistant to you, right? And so I think it's just important to know and, and also just don't rule out the, the big players, right? Uh, I think they're kind of in a holding pattern, perhaps is probably a better way of looking at it than than than, than resting. So um, but it's certainly fascinating and I'm I'm excited to see where that goes as it relates to search search dollars. <clears throat> this question actually is for you, Tyrion, and I'd like to get your thoughts as well, Ethan. But um what do you all think about the economy overall and whether we're going to see some kind of recovery in in the second half of this year next year any just high level thoughts on that yeah i can go first ethan unless you want to shoot no go ahead yeah i mean i think as the general economy right i think we, we remain um you know very very bullish i think one thing as as the uncarrier t-mobile we realize that this is is not a luxury. This is a necessity, right? This is something that you need to have. It's part of the customer journey. You can't really function without your phone. Um, if I lose, you know, my wallet or my keys, the day will still go on. If I lose my phone, I am stopping what I am doing, and I I, I cannot continue. In fact, I need my phone to get into my house and into my, my car. So, you know, I think that from from our perspective, we feel very very bullish on on kind of you know the, the what T-Mobile's role has to play. Um, but as far as the ad ad environment, all I can say is that it's changing. And just going back to what we started from in the top is, 
you know, uh, every dollar that you spend needs to be smart, um, smart layering in one PD. And the things that you're doing need to be about the 2.0 customer journey, not the customer journey of the past, uh, as, as Ethan mentioned, right? There's less people sitting on their lazy boy in their living room these days, uh, tuning into the linear programming. So how do you reach them? Well, layering in first party data and premium CTV is a great way. Or there's more people going to bars, restaurants, happy hours, airports, you know, meeting loved ones. How do they get there? They go via Uber and Lyft. Well, how do we meet them in that customer journey? And so we're very, you know, optimistic on on some of the opportunities that uh, that arise if if brands are are a smart and uh, continuing to be sophisticated in in the data they apply in their media buys, uh, and be thinking a little bit outside that box um, to to get more R in the ROI. Um, so yes. So from our perspective, you know, we we have to have a take on this in order to inform the totality of all the digital economy forecasting that we do, uh, we need to sort of settle on some assumptions about the economy. And then you bake that into all the different stuff. Uh, in this case, ad spending, but could be e-commerce, whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. So I guess we're cautiously optimistic. I think the, the quote unquote soft landing assumption is where the team landed. Um, you know, we don't, we try not to have too much of our own opinion. It's just a amalgamation of all of the, you know, the, the investment banks and the government agencies and the international financial institutions, they all have a bunch of projections. We sort of take it all together, mix it all up and come out with something. And the assumption is that sort of by the end of this year, things are going to be looking up. And by next year, they'll be looking up even more than that uh, without ignoring the fact that things are not great right now. They were not great towards the end of last year. They're not great now, um, but that it will be a, a soft landing uh, um environment rather than an actual recession. So we, we, that is the formal assumption that underlines all the numbers that you saw today. If, Paul, and if I may, just one last thing to add on that, because I want to make sure you answer, answer your question. Um, I totally agree, Ethan. I think, you know, as we talk about a lot of these tech companies and the rifts, um, one of the things I'm optimistic about is just kind of new, new companies and entrepreneurship, right? I think that there's it's going to yield a lot of new businesses, a lot of disruptive businesses, right? When um, you take top talented people and say, hey, what do I do now? Do I go work for a company? Or do I go to the Basin Innovation Center? Because I could find four other co-founders that are you know, tech savvy. And, you know, I'm, I'm really excited. ChatGPT is a great example of this and like people who are building businesses upon uh, on top of AI. Um, so very optimistic on on just op, uh, you know entrepreneurship in general and just new opportunities again as 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 we mentioned a few times on this call. Next question is about the writer strike and Ethan. The question is basically whether we have incorporated it into our forecasting. Right. Yeah. Um, and this this is a conversation that we did have ahead of time on this. Um, it, it's it, I, I can answer that in two ways. One is a sort of methodological limitations of a forecast, um, and then the other is a, is a simpler answer about what's really going about what sort of what we think. Um, it, it's very hard for forecasters to handle either or situations, black and white, yes or no situations when you don't know. Right? We we accum we we compiled all of this data, you know, a month month and a half ago. Uh, and if you just don't know whether something's going to happen, you can't really account for it. I, I compare it to TikTok, right? If, if TikTok might get banned in the U.S., if TikTok gets banned in the U.S., then its ad revenue next year is going to be zero. If TikTok doesn't get banned, then its ad revenue is going to be something akin to what we've projected. We can't split the difference. You can't go down the middle on that and say, oh, well, it might happen, it might not happen, we'll split the difference. That's going to be wrong. So the same thing with the the writer's strike. This is before the strike. Uh, they didn't really incorporate anything related to that because you just have to go on and you make an assumption and say, all right, well, let's just say everything's normal and here's the forecast. That said, it's a really small part of everything that we just talked about, right? I mean, it, it has no bearing on, uh, you know, Google search, Google search. It has no bearing on social media, everything with Meta and Facebook and Instagram and TikTok, right? It has no bearing at 80, 85% of the market uh, for digital ad spending. And it has no bearing on, but it does, of course, have a big, uh, a, a potentially significant impact on CTV and traditional TV. Um, so that that's the sort of methodological answer is that we didn't we didn't incorporate it because you can't incorporate either ors. But now that it has happened so far, the team is not inclined to make any adjustments uh, 
over a sort of short or medium term strike, we think the impact would be minimal uh, to the point where we wouldn't we wouldn't adjust any of these numbers. Now, if it goes on long term, then when this comes back around, we'll have to assess that. Great. And we have time for one last question. And it's also for you, Ethan, it might it might be something where you don't have the data right in front of you, but um, viewer is asking, what is the share of fast channels on the overall CTV growth? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so I yeah, I do not have the data in front of me, and I, I'm not capable of memorizing all ten thousand data points. We have that though. We absolutely have that. The fast channels are are a highlight of the story. We've got a bunch of tables and charts. We break them out by platform. So if you want to check out an individual uh, a fast provider that you're thinking about. We've got projections for them. Um, they are an increasingly significant part of the story, maybe surprisingly so. First of all, their audiences have become enormous um, and their revenue is growing fast. I mean, all the revenue is growing fast for all those CTV players, but they are in that conversation and they're increasingly big part of the conversation. I don't have the number for you off the top of my head, um, but we've got it. So we can follow up or you can find it on our website. Yeah. And just to close up on that, I know that when Fox released its earnings, they specifically called out Tubi as a, a big contributor. And we're seeing the fast channels have an increasing presence at the upfront. So it's a thing for sure. So unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. <clears throat> um, so I would like to thank you again, Ethan, for joining us. And a very special thanks to Cherian and to the team at T-Mobile Advertising Solutions. Our eMarketer production crew behind the scenes also deserves a huge thank you for making this webinar possible. As promised, we'll be emailing you a link to view today's slides along with a full recording of the session. So please keep an eye on your inbox for that. And before we wrap up, let me take a moment to tell you what's happening across eMarketer's media channels. We're thrilled to share that we are hosting another live Virtual Attention Summit taking place on Friday, June 2nd. So mark your calendars. You can register for the summit and upcoming live analyst and tech talk webinars at emarketer.com slash webinars. On the audio side, don't forget to tune in to Behind the Numbers, eMarketer's daily podcast, which you can find anywhere you listen to podcasts. And finally, please check out our newsletters. We have a couple of options across retail, finance, and digital advertising. So there's something for everyone. If you haven't already signed up, you can do so at emarketer.com slash newsletters. So thank you again for joining us and enjoy the rest of your workday.